When I was little, my father was famous. He was the greatest samurai in the empire. He cut off the heads of 131. Hey everybody, Jerry Williams, AK Greater Sapien here. Thanks for stopping by. Today, let's look at two more claims from Eric Dubay's 200 proofs, Earth is not a spinning ball, number 117 and 118. 117. Newton also theorized, and it is now commonly taught, that the Earth's ocean tides are caused by gravitational lunar attraction. If the moon is only 2,160 miles in diameter and the Earth 8,000 miles, however, using their own math and law, it follows that the Earth is 87 times more massive and therefore the larger object should attract the smaller to it and not the other way around. If the Earth is Earth's greater gravity is what keeps the moon in orbit. It's impossible for the moon's lesser gravity to su supersede the Earth's gravity, especially at Earth's sea level, where its gravitational attraction would even further out-trump the moon's, and the moon's gravity truly did supersede the Earth's, causing the tides to be drawn toward it. There should be nothing to stop them from continuing onwards and upwards towards their great attractor. I'm going to include 118 because he attaches them with, furthermore, the velocity and path of the moon are uniform and should therefore exert a uniform influence on the Earth's tides, when in actuality, the Earth's tides are very greatly and do not follow the moon. Earth's lakes, ponds, marshes, and other inland bodies of water also inexplicably remain forever outside the moon's gravitational grasp. If gravity was truly er drawing Earth's oceans up to it, all lakes, ponds, and other bodies of standing water should certainly have tides as well. So let's take these from the top. He says, using their own math and law, and says the Earth is 87 times the mass of the moon. It's more like 81, but I'm more interested in using their own math and law part, because what he's saying is that he's going to allow the assumption that the accepted model is correct in order to show it doesn't follow logic, uh, reason, and science. And I like that. I say it all the time. If you're going to criticize the model, you have to understand it and apply it. So that's a good step. But then he says, therefore, the larger object should attract the smaller to it and not the other way around. And nope, you screwed up right there they attract one another. The same amount of force is applied to both objects. Now, the smaller object will move more toward the larger, but they are both attracted. That's what our math and law says. And you said we were playing by those rules. He then says, if the Earth's greater gravity is what keeps the moon in orbit, it's impossible for the moon's lesser gravity to supersede the Earth's gravity, especially at Earth's sea level. Well, then it's a good thing that no one is saying that the moon's gravity is superseding that of the Earth's. The water is not being lifted off the surface of the Earth, is it? No. Since it's a fluid, it's being moved along the surface of the Earth and stacked up a little bit on the side closest to the moon. That's not superseding the Earth's gravity at all. Let's say I'm walking along and there's a barbell of like 800 pounds sitting on the concrete. Now, I cannot lift that. I cannot supersede the gravity of the Earth and pull that thing off the ground. But I can move it along the surface of the concrete. I can roll that thing. I can apply some upward force to overtake the friction and the surface and get it rolling. And I can probably even roll it up a hill, especially if we're talking a hill that goes up four feet over a thousand miles. That's what the moon is doing. It's just pulling water molecules along the surface and stacking them on top of other water molecules. And just like I could only roll that barbell up a hill not too steep, there's a limit to the moon's force. It can only stack water so high. It can't pull it off the surface of the earth. That's according to our math and laws. Next, uh, the velocity and path of the moon are uniform. They are not uniform. The moon's path around the Earth is an ellipse. It gets closer and farther away, and its velocity changes. It speeds up and slows down. So that's just factually incorrect. 
Remember, we're using our math and laws. He then says, the moon should therefore exert a uniform influence on the Earth's tides. Well, if the moon's distance from the Earth was uniform and the Earth's surface and bodies of water were uniform, you would be right. If the Earth were just a smooth, perfect sphere covered in one uniform body of water, no land interruptions, you would be right. But water cannot freely move across all areas of the Earth, can it? Remember, the moon is drawing water along the Earth's surface and stacking it up, so water has to come from somewhere. Not all bodies of water have a source of water to bring more water in. All the oceans are connected, so water moves freely in them, but small lakes and ponds are landlocked. There's no source of new water. Large lakes do actually have tides, but they're small enough that no one really cares. The problem that Dubé has is he starts off with the accepted model and then he adds a lot of nonsense assumptions that have nothing to do with what the science actually says. And it works for his fanboys, but it doesn't work here. Take care, everybody. Peace. Challenge me! Maybe you came by to congratulate me on last night's victory.